I'm tired. Spent the whole night looking at one of those reCAPTCHA pictures, trying to prove I wasn't a robot. Turns out it was just a collage. Today, we're looking at all the rookies taken in the NFL draft, how they'll reshape the teams that took them, and which ones you should look to add to your fantasy roster. We're breaking down every division into their own video. This is the NFC South. Welcome to Shutout Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus, that's Kevin, and if you like football, fantasy football, or big, big men in tight, tight pants, this is the place for you. What did I say at the end there? What is Atlanta famous for? Tyler Perry? Oh, Coke. Do you have a Coke? Well then, Atlanta Falcons. At the eighth spot overall, the Falcons took running back B. John Robinson out of Texas. He's 5'11", 215 pounds, the best prospect since Saquon Barkley. Is it dumb to take a running back so high? Yeah, probably. But what are you gonna do? If Desmond Ritter is your starting quarterback this year, you're gonna need some playmakers around you. The Bijan kind. The depth chart here is Tyler Algier, Cordero Patterson, and Caleb Huntley. And if you are a manager of any of those players, please find a nice comfortable place to hide and cry. That entire backfield just took a huge hit of the Bijan variety, as I predicted. You know, I say the craziest things sometimes, and yet, I'm an excellent guesser. So what do you do with Tyler Algier? Well, he's a hold for insurance and depth, and that's about it. Some people are still so confident in Tyler Algier, even with the Bijan signing, they think there's going to be two 1,000-yard rushers on the team this year. Quick question. Who was the running back on the Giants the year they drafted Saquon Barkley? You don't know! Let me tell you right now. Bijan Robinson is only coming out of the game to get water, a horse tranquilizer, maybe a back massage. He didn't come to Atlanta to watch Tyler Algier run the football. Cordero Patterson is also a hold for me, but mostly because it's just too late to sell him. He's 32 years old, and there's still up in the air what he's going to be this year. Obviously, Bijan coming to town means that he's not going to be the lead back, but he was a wide receiver prior to that, so they could move him around the formation as some kind of specialist or special weapon. We really don't know, and we probably won't know until the season starts. They certainly are thin at wide receiver. They've got Drake London, Mac Collins, Scotty Miller, and then Kyle Pitts as the tight end. So it's possible that Cordero Patterson could get used there. I want to talk about Desmond Ritter for a second here, because they didn't grab a QB in this draft. There just wasn't really one to grab. They had a shot at Anthony Richardson, but they grabbed B. John Robinson instead. And the next chance they would have had would have been Hendon Hooker, which really is more of a lateral move from Desmond Ritter. So I'm glad they didn't do that. I'm not a Desmond Ritter believer. He has this season only to prove himself, and then he's probably getting replaced next year. So my advice is to sell Desmond Ritter. Here's their list of undrafted free agents. I wasn't really high on anybody here. Justin Marshall, a wide receiver out of Buffalo, is of note. Six foot one, 205 pounds. He runs a 448. He's got an RAS of 7.7. .7. He's got size and speed and a big wingspan, which apparently Arthur Smith likes. His shuttle and three cone were shit. He could be a wide receiver five in time. Carolina Panthers. The Panthers drafted quarterback Bryce Young out of Alabama with the first overall pick. After a rotating door of Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and ex-XFL stank, they finally got their man. Their tiny little man. They had to take Bryce Young. It was barely a choice. He's five foot ten. Ha! <laughs> okay, buddy. Sure you are. He's a Heisman winner. I mean, not last year, but, like, it's on his resume. He was the first overall pick. He's an immediate starter. I don't care if Andy Dalton outplays him in the preseason. Owner David Tepper is desperate to get this thing started. Bryce Young is currently being mocked about the middle of the first round in a 12-team rookie draft. So there you would have to choose between Young, Stroud, or Richardson. Who's your flavor? You got the first overall draft pick, the second, and the high upside of Richardson. Maybe what you want to do is look at their receivers before you make your choice. In the second round, they took wide receiver Jonathan Mingo out of Ole Miss. He's six foot one, 226 pounds, and runs a 4.46. So let's take a look at this depth chart here. We got Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, and Terrace Marshall. Adam Thielen is 32 years old. He signed a three-year deal. Chark is on a one-year deal, and Marshall is on the third year of his rookie deal. Mingo is not guaranteed anything here, not even with second-round draft capital. But I do expect him to get involved at some point here. 
Chark and Marshall have consistently underperformed, and Thielen is in decline. I absolutely love Jonathan Mingo. He can be a deep threat. He can get huge yards after catch. At times, he actually reminded me of Debo Samuel. He's currently being mocked about the back of the second round in 12-team rookie drafts, although I do think that could change. But right now, you'd be choosing between him, Jaden Reed, and Marvin Mims. And honestly, you can make a case for all of them. I absolutely love all those receivers. But you could give the advantage to Mingo for size, draft capital, and the depth chart in front of him. My expectations are that Jonathan Mingo will become a huge part of this offense, and I do think he could become the wide receiver one here for Bryce Young within the next year. Checking out their UDFAs, maybe Josh Van, wide receiver out of South Carolina. He was mildly interesting. I think this receiving room already does have some depth with LaVisca Chenault and Shai Smith. New Orleans Saints. In the third round, they took running back Kendra Miller out of TCU. He's 5'11", 215 pounds. He didn't test at the combine because he had a knee injury, but I'm really not worried about that. I've seen his tape and he's plenty fast. I used my mind stopwatch. The depth chart here is Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, and Dwayne Washington. Now Kamara is facing some legal issues and could be suspended for alleged no-nos. Jamal Williams, the great spoiler of fantasy running backs, signed a three-year deal. So that makes two running backs here that are 27 years or older, and one of them is going to miss some time. Currently, Kendra Miller is being mocked about the top of the second round, where you would have to choose between someone like Devin A. Chain or Roshan Johnson. Now, I feel like Roshan Johnson is in a similar situation behind aging vets. Miller will probably get earlier work, and Johnson might have to wait. But both could be lead backs as early as next year. So, which one do you pick? When you're facing two players in two similar situations, I think the best thing to do is look at the next year or two and ask yourself, which offense do you think is going to be better? Always buy into a good offense. So what does the future hold for Kendra Miller? Well, besides getting some work in his rookie year, Jamal Williams will be going after this year, I think. And Kamara signed a five-year deal, but I think there's zero chance that he actually finishes out that contract. There's an out after this year. It would account for $16 million in dead cap money, but it's possible. Financially speaking, it would actually make more sense to try and get out from underneath Kamara's contract in two years, which would make Kendra Miller 22 years old, which would still probably be younger than a lot of rookies coming into the league. In the fourth round, they took quarterback Jake Hayner out of Fresno. Derek Carr just signed a four-year deal. Jameis Winston signed a one-year deal to be the backup. So Jake Hayner is potentially the future backup. And I don't think that's a good investment. I don't know who's reaching for Jake Hayner, but I wouldn't do it. In the sixth round, they took wide receiver A.T. Perry out of Wake Forest. Yeah! Fan favorite, A.T. A.T. He's six foot three, 195 pounds, and runs a 4.47. Look at that big-ass R.A.S. 9.62. Shake it! Shake that healthy R.A.S. He wasn't one of my favorites going into the draft. Let's look at the depth chart. They got Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, and Traquan Smith. And Michael Thomas is 30 years old. He's on a one-year deal. Traquan Smith is on a two-year deal. Now, if A.T. Perry gets a real chance here, he could stick on the roster. I'm not optimistic about this offense, though. In mock drafts, he's going about the mid-fourth round. And I'd rather take other people there. Tucker Craft, Dwayne McBride. But I would take A.T. Perry before other wide receivers like Charlie Jones or Puka Nakua. I feel like he's a late-round stash with potential upside. Here's their UDFAs. Cy Barrett, wide receiver out of Davenport. Very little tape. Seems pretty raw. But he does have plus athleticism. Six foot, 190 pounds. He's got an RES of 944. I don't think he's taking anyone's job. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In the fifth round, the Bucks took tight end Payne Durham out of Purdue. He's six foot six, 253 pounds, and his metrics were kind of poopy. So the depth chart is Cade Otten, Co Keeft, and David Wells. Kate Otten was a fourth round draft pick last year, and I thought a pretty good one. He's actually got some pretty good athleticism, better than Durham. Durham's not mocked anywhere in the top four rounds, and I really don't think that it's going to be a good offense with Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask slinging the ball. So I'm not expecting much from the tight end position. My expectations here are that they're going to draft another tight end next year. In the sixth round, they drafted Trey Palmer, wide receiver out of Nebraska. Six foot, 192 pounds, and he runs a 4-3-3. First off, I think this guy is more than speed. I was into him way before the combine. 
He had 1,000 yards receiving last year and nine touchdowns. Now, the death chart here is Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Russell Gage. Evans is 29 years old, but he's on a five-year deal, so I don't think he's going anywhere. Godwin and Gage are both 27 years old. They're both on three-year deals, and they both have outs after this year. So if they're looking for a youth injection, they just got it with Trey Palmer. Palmer could easily be the wide receiver four here and fill the void left by Scotty Miller. For some reason, I feel like one of these wide receivers at the top could get traded this year or before next year. So I feel like there might be some room to move up here. Currently, he's being mocked about the third round, and that's a bit much for me. I wouldn't choose him over Chase Brown or Eric Gray. I really like the player, but I don't like the ADP. Out of the UDFA class, Rakim Jarrett, wide receiver out of Maryland. Six foot, 192 pounds, and runs a 4.44. He's got an RAS of 8.41. I absolutely love Rakim Jarrett. I would absolutely take Jarrett late, but I'm only stashing him for whatever future QB might come to the team. Rakim Jarrett as a UDFA is stealing. But we're not done yet, because they also stole one of my favorite running backs in this draft, Sean Tucker out of Syracuse. He's 5'9", 207 pounds, ran a 4.39 at his pro day. He had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons at Syracuse. He was undrafted because of some medical concerns, and also... He might be a shitty pass blocker. The running back depth chart here is pretty shaky, and it might give Tucker some time to develop and room for opportunity. He reminds me of Austin Eckler. If Jared is petty theft, I'm calling Sean Tucker grand larceny. We're breaking down the draft by every division, so if you haven't checked out the other divisions yet, please go check out those videos as well. Also, leave your comments below, subscribe, like the video, and say hi to your mom for me. We'll see you next time. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. It sound right, boy. Thank you for watching my video. They call me. Senor Poopy Pants. <laughs>